Oh my god, dude. Dude, get your GoPro. Get your GoPro. Get your GoPro. All right. This makes it a lot easier for me. I'm going to post four to day four first. And if you've seen my Instagram, you probably know that my GoPro is completely gone. And I want to start from the start of day four to the end of day four. It was the most unbelievable day of fishing I've ever had in my life. More bad than good. But the goal for both of us that day, we were going specifically for peacock bass. And we both wanted to break our PBs. I went down to Florida again while I getting text messages if I'm on airplane mode. Okay, I went down to Florida with Sean Medvar, my child. Oh, that sounds so weird. Not my child. I fished with nonstop fishing Brennan, or as he now is known, Adam Life 16. You probably see him on Instagram if you're from Florida. Badass kid. But. Uh, he wasn't with us day four, he was with us the first three days, so I'll get into that in the later videos. But it was just me and Sean this time, and we'd already had a good three days. I mean, we are, we, we are already slayed, but um, it started off at this peacock spot that really, really seemed, that really seemed interesting. I knew it would be a good spot. We pulled up, and there's just boats everywhere. There's just fishing boats after fishing boats, people going for peacocks. Oh my, it was ridiculous, but we were still catching fish. I mean, yep. I think we started off the day with five or six <laughs> right. peacocks right off the bat. Some were spawning, some were hunting. I actually got a pretty good one. Uh, Sean got a pretty good one. So they were starting off well. And I also, there was, a, there was a cotton mouth. And I had no idea this was a cotton mouth. But we just thought it was a banded water, like a normal water snake with a hook in it. So I went down the, and it had line coming out. So I went to go down to pick this fish. This fish. I went to go down and pick the snake up. And I'm trying to get the hook out, and it, it I can clearly see it has a triangular head, which means it's a venomous snake, but I mean, at the time, I didn't really care. This thing bites my shoe, and, and the mouth is like clear as day, just this big ass white mouth. And it's a cotton mouth, clearly, but Sean <laughs> told me it wasn't, so I almost got bit by a water moccasin, which was hilarious. Got the hook out, he swam free, though, it was no big deal. Then we uh, oh, God, went to this next boring. spot after the, this is a public canal. We went to, I, it must have been private. It wasn't private, but there was right houses away. around it. There was a, a couple ponds. And these ponds were just ridiculous. There's bass fishermen in there, like peacock bass fishermen. Look at that. But there was some serious big peacocks in there. Sean there broke his PB at this pond, be, which dude. was just Look up the, the canal from where we were originally. But this isn't, it's a part of the canal, but it's not the canal itself. Oh, it's a, It's kind of like an oxbow That's pond or something. Pain. With houses Dude, around it, we were just in these people's like backyards, and I caught a couple small ones. Sean caught an absolute giant. I right lost there, a couple that were as big as Sean's, if not bigger. And I think I saw one on a bed that was easily seven or eight pounds. Oh my gosh, that lake was pretty cool. But then we ran out of shiners. We picked up the shiners in the base store. This was literally the last two dozen shiners. Actually, it might have been three dozen shiners. The last shiners in the bait store. Like they, we sold them out. We were like, all right, this is do or die time now. I need my PB. And at this point, I had been grinding for four days for this personal best peacock. I saw him brook my peacock bass since I think the last time I went down to Florida with Sean, which was a 3.61 pound peacock. I caught in a shiner as well, a uh, dead shiner. And then so I catch, I pull up this next canal, and I immediately catch like a three pound, like a big peacock. It's a good fish. I mean, by any means, that's a solid peacock, but it still wasn't my PB. And then we cross the street, and there's this... We were seeing a couple of peacocks on bed. We are seeing a bunch of Midas cichlids, which is a, usually a good sign that there's peacocks bedding somewhere if there's Midas cichlids, because they try to eat the eggs off the peacock beds. And there's just one corner that I kept flipping to, and every time I would get bit, and at this one... I think the first two times I, I flipped, I just got railed and went like that, and the line snuffed. It's like, I was using Sean's... Sean's rod and his leader broke so I'm like Sean that was a six pounder like as a joke like I don't know how big it was it could have been a half a pound it could have been a seven pounder I wouldn't know but as a joke I said oh it was a six pounder and then I kept flipping shiners in there every time I get my bait stolen and then I flipped in there I caught a couple little large mouth like just I'm like oh is that really what I broke off on no I take the biggest shiner in the bucket this thing's like five inches long flip in the corner giant male peacock comes out slurps it down Oh my god, this thing's huge. I'm fighting this fish on Sean's tiny little drop shot rod. 
like this this rod is made for like dank large mouth and this thing is taking me all out in the middle of the canal this thing makes this one surging run and the, the canal is shaped like this and i'm like here and it's like all the way down the l like the canal shaped like an l and he went took me all the way down I'm like sean i couldn't see it very well but i'm like sean this is my pb i think i finally bring in close to them like holy cow that's a really good fish but i didn't realize how big it actually was I didn't even want to weigh it because, like, I was stressing it out. Dude, that's a giant. And then I could see the line that's from before that I broke off in this fish's mouth. So, five minutes earlier, this is the same fish that I broke off, jacking that hook, in that same Dude, big male. I don't know if he was on a bed or what. Ate hey, that second shiner yeah. with the hook in his the, uh, throat, with the line coming the out of his mouth. That was probably the craziest catch of my life. That rivals the 26-inch uh, rainbow trout Amazon. I caught in the creek. Catching that, that, by the way, peacocks are smart fish. So to catch that same peacock, the hook that same peacock twice in five minutes with the hook in his mouth is ridiculous. Put that bad boy on the scale. 5.31 pounds, certified new personal best peacock. Uh, we didn't weigh Sean's. I'm guessing Sean's was like four and a half or something. So at this point, I'm stoked. My day is made. I broke, I, I grinded out for this fish. I finally caught it on the last day. And then all hell breaks loose for the rest of the day. It just goes downhill. Starts off good, just climax, gets, goes right downhill. Literally five minutes later, we cross back, this, cross back across the street. Sean hooks up Peacock, one. nice one. I go down and I can see this fish is hooked in the fin. Like it's hooked, he foul hooked it in the pectoral fin. So I don't want to, um, I don't want this fish, I don't want the boat flip it because he can hurt its fin. He can rip its fin right out, which is obviously not good for a spawning male fish. You want these fish to survive. So I go down to grab it. And this hill is just like a straight down drop to this canal. canal and it's a limestone drop off. This canal is shaped like that, yeah, the bottom. Happened. Is just straight down. So I grab his fish. I lose my footing. I'm trying to hold on to the grass, but the grass is ripping out. Boom, oh fall head first in the water. I go back Dude, up. GoPro, GoPro falls GoPro. off the back of my get head and goes into the water. And at this point, I just throw the fish up and try to like kick my legs around. And then I try to go down. And it's just, it's 15, 20 feet. This canal is so deep. It was probably one of the worst canals you could ever try to lose your GoPro at. But all the footage from day four is gone. I got footage from day one, day two, and day three. Day four, completely gone. I'm using Sean's footage. Please check out his channel. He's helping me out so much with this video. I need to bring this video to you guys because it was the most ridiculous day of fishing in my life. So at this point, we're, we're playing back and we're laughing our asses off. This video is so funny. I'm not mad about the GoPro. It's kind of annoying that to buy a new one because I'm going to be scared of it. Scared of losing it again, which I probably will because I'm just kind of, I just wasn't thinking. There was a lot going through my head that vacation. A lot of personal stuff that was going on with me that vacation. And I wasn't exactly on my A game that trip. So that was a really stupid mistake. But I wasn't really mad about the GoPro itself. I was mad about me. I got Sean's personal best and my personal best. Plus like eight other peacocks on video that are gone. And then plus also the $250 or however much the GoPro Hero 4 Silver costs. So, I think for the next two hours, every place we stop at, it's just peacock after peacock. We were putting on a sleigh fit, but there were still boats everywhere. Every time a boat would come through, we got to go to the next canal because the boat stirred up the water, and there was literally probably a dozen boats or more that day. Some were fishing, some were blasting music as loud as they could. It was pretty ridiculous that the, the canals in Dade County are like that. Um, I didn't really know. I guess it's probably because of the Sunday. But yeah, we're just catching largemouth and peacocks every single stop. We're flipping at docks, getting hooked up, flipping under trees, getting hooked up and coming out out of nowhere, coming from under under embankments and everything. It was pretty cool. I think we got about 15 peacocks or so, I would say, in that, that day. And then we're like, all right, there's a trip. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. No, it's not over yet. So... We're we gotta we stop at a gas station because we're about to we're literally about to board on an airplane. We're about to go to the airport, and we gotta put on our nice clothes. So I I take off my dirty clothes, which were basically soaking wet at this point because I fell fell into the water. And I put on my nice clothes, freshly they're just fresh clean because I have to go on an airplane and I can't get them dirty. But we're like, ooh, I I found a spot with tarpon, and it's basically this tiny pond, like half an acre pond, connected to 
a saltwater canal that only in high tide fish can get in there. And somehow we pull up to this pond and there's tarpon this freaking big just swimming around. And this tiny little pond, we're calling it Tarpon Pond, right next to the airport. Oh my God, it was awesome. So we're, we're throwing shiner after shiner. We're literally chumming them in and these tarpon will not bite. It was low tide. So the culvert that connects the, can, the tiny pond to the canal is, is there's no water because it's low tide. So I go to the canal and literally it's just shallow, 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 kind of deep, shallow, shallow. It's really shallow. How many times did I say shallow? And I put my, this is, by the way, okay, so picture this. That big peak I got caught was on a shiner like five inches long. The shiner I pitched into the saltwater canal. This is a saltwater canal. I'm using freshwater shiners. It was about two and a half inches long, like a small shiner. I pitched it in there. Do, 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 do. And I, I kid you not, I've caught false albacore. I've caught giant carp. I've caught giant stingrays. I've caught sharks. I've never seen a fish pull like this in my life. And I'm using this tiny ass little drop shot rod with like 12 pound, 15, 12 or 15 pound fluorocarbon. And this fish just takes 75 yards. Like it's nothing. Like it's just a walk in the park. And I see him way, way down there. And he just leeches, lurches up and I'm like, oh God, it's a snook. And at this point, I'm screaming because I originally thought I had a tarpon, but he wasn't jumping. I just saw his head come up 35 yards down in the mangroves. And this drag is tight, by the way, and he's ripping it all the way down. So he goes down this way and then comes back across the canal. And, and my dad said it, I think he got a snook because what they do is they go right to the mangroves. And I saw his fish. I saw his head come up, by the way. He cuts back across the canal, gets hung up a mangrove. Second that line touches the mangroves, I'm like, it's done. Sean got dude, the last dude, part of the drag. fight, but he didn't get the, um, because my GoPro was gone. I wasn't filming, so oh my God, if you he didn't get the original big run, but big um, that was big a snook of a lifetime. Big I'd say, oh my God, it's way I had to, to over-exaggerate, but I'd say that fish was 20, 25 pounds. No problem. It was so Don't big. And it ate in less than a foot of water on a tiny shiner, which is a freshwater fish on a freshwater rod in a saltwater canal, right next to the airport, by the way. And this pond that's literally, you turn your head and the pond's right there, has these 30 pound tarpon in it. So definitely a day that I want to forget, but I don't want to forget. It was unfortunately due to my circumstances, I couldn't go in after the fish because I had my nice airport clothes on. I couldn't get it dirty. I think if I was able to go in the water, I probably might have were to land that fish. And if I had it heavier gear, I easily would have landed that fish. But I was using this tiny little Bass Mojo lightweight drop shot rod. And that, the drag's tight. I mean, that's a strong reel. And it was destroying me. What's done is done. And um, looking back, I don't... It's kind of those things that you can't really do anything about it. And literally, so uh, I was in an airport and hooked up with the snook of a lifetime between a 45 minute period. So the second that fish came off, it was just like, that's the vacation right there. Threw the rods in the car, off the airport, flew back to cold ass New Jersey. Here I am with my ice picks. There actually is no more ice. You guys will see no more ice fishing. But you'll see a couple Florida videos. And we'll be back to the quest for winter fish from shore this time. Hopefully you guys enjoy these next Florida videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this unbelievable storytelling video scene thing that I haven't really done before but I had to do it because I have no footage of this day it was I can't I, I've said it enough times but it was the most ridiculous day of fishing I've ever I've ever had I probably left out some details but this video is dragging on at this point so I'm gonna leave it at that thank you guys for watching see you in the next video and I'm sorry for the horrible upload rate recently but having a lot going on and of course Florida kind of took that took that uh, a little bit longer. So videos will be back in action. Um, that's all I got for you. See you in the next video.